Hi, I'm Hannah Bernard. You're watching Market One Minute, and I'm here today with Steve Van Deventer of Prevceutical Medical. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, Hannah, pleasure. So let's talk about the team that you have assembled with this company. A very stellar track record from all of them, including yourself, but talk about them a little bit. Well, ultimately, I mean, I was a broker many years ago. I've owned uh, private companies, so I've got a good track record with both respect to private companies mm -hmm. and public companies. Um, ultimately, one of the things I realized I needed to do with moving this company, Prevaceutical, forward was was to bring a team that was actually smarter than myself together. That was a very important factor. And so I look specifically for certain people with certain talents mm -hmm. that are able to grasp the industry and move this, this medical company forward. Mm -hmm. One of the first people we brought in was a gentleman called Brian Harris. He's our director and vice president of business development. He actually was the founder of Ticketmaster and, took t and basically created Ticketmaster. Then the second uh, gentleman we brought in was a gentleman called Greg Reed. And Greg Reed is a gentleman that uh, has a company called Secret Knock. Mm -hmm. And by Forbes magazine, he's been told as one of the top three keynote speakers in the world. So I brought him in to help me with speaking and you know, getting this message out to the community yeah. because that's what he's very good at doing. Then we brought in uh, Shabir Rajan. And Shabir Zan is our chief financial officer, and she is impeccable. Uh, her, her track record, uh, she's got more degrees and numbers being behind and letters behind her than most people you can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, she was the director of finance for the Canada Line, and she also is the CFO for the Canadian Freestyle Olympic team. So mm -hmm. we brought her in as well. Now we needed to get some science into the company and some medical science coming, so now we have a good board and, and, and company there. So we brought in a gentleman, Dr. Mac Jawadaka, and Mac was with Pfizer for 28 years. Mm -hmm. And while at Pfizer 28, he was a portfolio manager, basically managed all the portfolio of the drugs and developed the drugs right from the step one all the way through to final delivery. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the drugs he was responsible for, everyone knows us, called a drug called Zoloft, mm -hmm. which is very, very well known. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we needed to actually have somebody hands-on, scientist day-to-day -day doing all the separation of the molecules and stuff like that. So we brought in that Dr. Harry Parekh, and he's actually a senior lecturer and professor at the University of Queensland in Australia. Mm -hmm. His technologies are out of this world. What he's been doing is next generation cutting edge stuff. So basically, we brought Harry in, and he is now chief research officer. And the company was founded on preventive nutraceuticals, hence the name Prevceuticals. But tell us about your proprietary product, the Cell B9. Well, Cell B9 is developed from, it's an extract of the venom from a blue Caribbean scorpion. And ultimately, we take the venom and we take some of the peptides out of that mm. and create a solution that creates the Cell B9 as a, as a dietary supplement. And this dietary supplement is used for your immune system to help boost that. And there are some other ailments that it could actually work with, but because it's a nutraceutical or a homeopathic drug, you really can't make any claims. So hence why we've actually started to look into synthesizing the venom to actually be able to do the clinical trials to approve these type of claims. You just announced your partnership with Uniquest, or you announced that recently, and you have <coughs> said that you're going to develop products in three different areas. But one of the things on the list is to start this process of testing this blue venom. So tell us about that. Venom is, is, has a whole bunch of molecules in it. Each of these molecules inside them have certain peptides. And these peptides are what we're actually after to get a, a kind of a blueprint of those. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, from the molecule, we'll take the peptides out and we'll actually figure out the sequencing of the amino acids so there's a sequence. Once we have these sequences in place, that gives us the blueprint to be able to now synthesize the, the venom. There is uh, the new technology we're using with the linker technology Harry developed. It's a one-step process to synthesizing rather than a multiple-step process. And a multiple step process, each time you, you do it, you lose a bit of the, the authentication of the drug. It's not as 100%. Yeah. So now with this one step, we're able to actually have a nature identical drug. Very exciting. And you have other products in your portfolio as well. It's one specific to the effectiveness of CBD treatments. So tell us about that. It's a soluble gel. and We call it soul gels. Soul gel is basically a liquid substance that we put putting into an inhaler, a nasal inhaler, kind of like a dress stand, but it'll be, it'll be dose specific. 
And then within that, this will deliver the different type of cannabinoids to, the, to each of the individual humans that use them. Mm -hmm. So ultimately what you would do is the second the nasal uh, inhaler is used and the actual uh, liquid hits the mucosa behind the nasal cavity, it gels instantaneously. Okay. So unlike other type of drugs that just go down the back of your throat and it goes to your stomach and then your acids eat it all up, it'll sit on your mucous membrane behind your, on your mucosa and actually gel there and sit there for seven days. Hmm. So now what we can do is we can infuse those with the different cannabinoids or even the scorpion venom. Mm -hmm. And by infusing into that, we can now time release them over a seven day period. So not having to take any type of nails inhaler like once or twice or three times a day, we're actually able to take it once a week or maybe twice a week maximum. And in addition to some of these products in your portfolio, you also have research and development projects targeting obesity and diabetes. Very exciting. So tell us about where the research is with that and what the potential is there. That's actually one of our biggest projects we're, we're undertaking at mm -hmm. this time. Uh, the the uh, dual gene therapy we're doing, uh, Harry's been working on it for just over four years. He's made some astounding findings. What he's proven over the time is that he's figured out which gene has a lot of responsibility to obesity and diabetes. So ultimately, he's now even gone even further now to take that gene and he's figured out how he can silence the gene. Hmm. So by silencing the gene, you basically effectively can eliminate obesity and diabetes. So what we're doing right now is we're now starting a four-year trial where we're gonna do all the different stages through the preclinicals to get to IND, which is the initial new drug. Mm -hmm. Once we get to that point, we'll have all the different data proving that we can actually science. So we're actually looking at a curative therapy, a natural cure for the therapy for diabetes. And in addition to all the lives that you could change by finding a cure for diabetes, there's also a market there as well. So talk a little bit about that. The, the World Health Organization, uh, about 18 months ago, said that by 2044, if we don't solve diabetes, the world will be financially broke because of diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's impacting all types of generations and all types of uh, people from all types of races. Um, diabetes is about a $1.3 trillion a year financial impact to the globe from lack of work, surgeries, different type of diseases and ailments like you know, kidney disease mm -hmm. and, and it goes on and on and on. This is something that needs to be taken care of. We need to make sure we can eliminate that because of all the processed foods and stuff. People are much more susceptible to, these, to diabetes these days. And let's talk about some of the future goals of the company. Any milestones that we can look forward to for the rest of this year and going into the next one? Yeah, you should see some some results coming on our diabetes. Uh, you'll have some of the results coming out as well. We start doing our preclinical trials. On the soluble, soluble gels, the sole gels, that'll be quite interesting because that's going to be a little faster mm -hmm. in the matter that we've got the sole gels completely done already in place. We just now need to infuse the different cannabinoids. Yeah. And being kind of in the biopharma space, there's a little bit more of a faster pace with that. So we'll see quite a few different variations on that. And then lastly, we're looking at other different things to help with preventive space or different uh, drugs that we can deliver. And one that's going to be quite interesting is, is a new drug that we're quite keen on and in the process of looking at. It's basically, it's, it's very strong like to the fentanyl and opioids. However, it has, it has non-addictive capacities to it. Wow. So that's quite an interesting debate. There'll be a lot more to come on that in the future. Lots to look forward to coming from you guys. Thank Absolutely. you so much for being with us, Steve. Thank you.